I'm Robin Musicant. And I'm Allison Bauer. We are standing here at the entrance to JT Farm, which happens to be one of the most successful horse show barns, not only in the area, but nationally. Think we should drop in and say hi? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Let's, Let's go. go. Well, here we are in the wonderful heated indoor ring at JT Farm. Allison and I have managed to track down Stacy Robertson, who is the farm manager here at JT. And we thought we'd ask her for a couple minutes of her time to tell us about these wonderful horses that we're working with today and some of the things that they do during the winter when everybody else is skiing or snorkeling down in the Caribbean. It appears that Stacy's working right through it all. Well, we're lucky it's um, under 20 degrees outside today, but we can ride because of our heated indoor. So everyone gets to come and still ride um, their horses. Lexia Spoon here, she's been uh, just moved up to the three foot level. So we're practicing the bigger jumps, going a little faster as you saw. She leases Spoon. Ill is riding uh, Edgar. Edgar's owned uh, by Jim Toon, owner of the farm. He's a sale horse. He was imported. He's a former Grand Prix horse. And then Erica's riding Topaz, who's in our lesson program. Um, he's ridden by beginners, anybody that, that the public school, the public riding school is from the public school. <laughs> And these horses go all year round. They don't get let down for the winter. Some horse, some people feel that because it's winter time, there's snow on the ground, the temperatures are icy, that we just kind of shut it down and pick things up when the weather turns better. But we keep going. We've got a nice facility here. The horses don't play as much outside in the winter, so it's good for them to stretch their legs, still get out, work um, a little bit. Now, do you continue competing through the winter, or? We do, we take it down a notch. I go to maybe a show every six weeks. Um, a local show, kind of a mellower atmosphere. The people in Florida, of course, are still doing the big time um, training and then they're doing the bigger uh, horse shows, but we, we have a little mellower. So what are these riders working towards? Aren't they trying to qualify for some of the more regionally or nationally recognized That would finals? be more the students Jimmy has in Florida. Uh, we do more of the local, uh, these guys have small, you know, they're not going to be Tried little Grand Prix. You might be at the Grand Prix right <laughs> next week. <laughs> Absolutely. With the way he was jumping around today. Yeah, yeah. I think he was ready for the jump. He's yeah, definitely athletic. making his case that he's still in the game. Yeah. No, we work more on basics up here in the winter. In the, in the public riding school, too, we have um, lots of ladies who rode as kids and are coming back to riding. Um, no, there's not. it's not a high pressure. You have to go to the AA shows next week. So they're still showing, though. Just at a different at, at a different level. Yes. Yep. Yep. Not as stressful. A lot of people like that. <laughs> well, let's see a little bit of what these ladies can do with their horses. Great. Hi, I'm Allison. I'm here with Edgar and Illa, and Illa is a working student here at JT. So how did you first get connected with JT? I met Stacy at the Lewisboro's Horseman Association barbecue last summer, and she ta told me about how she is looking for a working student to come down, help her run the barn, and learn how to run a top show barn, which I was very interested in, and to get to ride some beautiful horses like Edgar, and learn how to ride hunters the correct, perfect way. When did you first start to ride? I started riding when I was three. So I've been riding for about 18, no, longer than that now. Gosh, 20 years, 20 years now. And we have just, I've loved it. I clicked with it right away. It's actually really funny. My grandfather bought me a model briar horse when I was three and I immediately loved it. I had to get 10 more to run right out and learn how to ride ponies and just the whole thing just happened in snowballs. And here we are today. What do you do here as a working student? We do everything. We get to work with clients as they learn during the winter time about how to ride their horses. We get to build relationships with the horses we ride. We learn how to feed the horses, how to properly groom them, taking care of their legs after they ride, making sure they're happy, healthy, and ready to go. 
Is there anything special that you need to do for them during the winter time? Yes, during the winter they need to wear coolers and stay really warm because even though our indoor is heated and super awesome to ride in, outside it's not so awesome. It's quite cold. So we wear eight layers, they wear at least one, sometimes two, and make sure that they eat lots of food. What does a typical week in the winter look like for you? A typical week in the winter involves working around the snow that seems to happen every day, getting the horses out and turn out if possible, making sure they get down to the ring to at least stretch out, do some light work if it's too cold, because you don't want walking them back when it's really cold and having them hot. They do need to get out and still keep in shape, like a human. I'm here with Lexi, who's a junior rider at JT. So how old are you? I'm 11 years old. How long have you been riding for? I've been riding for five or six years. And how long have you been riding at JT? I've been riding at JT for two years. What are your goals and aspirations for the sport? My goals for the sport is to eventually go to um, Florida and show there. It sounds a lot nicer than being here in the cold. So many people don't understand the importance of a properly fitting saddle. Fortunately for us, Anthony from Devon Koo is fitting one right now. Anthony, would you show us how to fit a saddle? Sure. Um, to start off with, really, when fitting a saddle, we want to make sure that the horse is as comfortable as he possibly can. So the main thing we want to focus on is making sure that the saddle's fitting right in the middle of his back. So usually, we like to fit the saddle right above this point, right here. And then another thing we really like to focus on is making sure that the horse has a good front end freedom. So, you know, we like to trace his scapula, make sure that's good, and because the scapula will move, so we like to keep a nice range area. And then also, you know, making sure that we have a good girth passage, making sure that the saddle and girth and everything else that's on him really can work together. And that, from that we can really, you know, make sure that the horse isn't gonna get pinched or really, we want you to get the most out of your horse. So Devaku, if I'm, if I'm right, is one of the premier saddle makers. Is that correct? Yeah, um, we're, you know, we're really focused on creating a really well traditional product, but also mixing in a little technology. And you can see our products, you know, being used by Olympians as well as everyone down in Florida, you know, really all over the spectrum. We really want to make a saddle that fits everybody's horse and then fits you as the rider. Now, what would be the difference between something like a Devaku saddle and your average saddle that you would just go to the store and pick up? Pretty much the main difference is with Devaku, we make a saddle that, as I said, is fit for you so it's and custom. your horse. It's yes, yeah, it's a completely custom saddle, and really what it is is, it's helping us help you get the most performance out of your horse. So really, we want to make sure that we're not hurting your horses anyway, but we also want to make sure that you, as a rider, are feeling comfortable, and also your horse. So what are the dangers of not having a properly fitting saddle? The danger of having a not properly fitted saddle is really you're going to experience, you know, maybe damage to your horse's back or even behavioral problems just because they're not happy. I mean, when I wear clothes that don't fit, I'm not happy. So really making sure that the horse is clothed properly really helps making a huge difference in what you can do with your horse. Wow, so there could actually be pain issues with your horse if Absol you're not fitted properly to Absolutely. the right saddle. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise, Anthony. No problem. And thank you to you, Chevy, for being such a good demonstrator. <laughs> yeah. Allison and I would like to thank you all for joining us today on our visit to JT Farm. We're especially grateful to Stacy Robertson for her hospitality. And of course, Anthony, thank you for your expertise on proper saddle fitting. Thank you, of course, to our horses and riders. And thank you for joining us on LCTV Channel 20. So long from JT Farm. Bye. You're watching Lewisboro Community Television, Channel 20.